that's an important question because that, that money would be paying for making more of those awesome shots. How about we do an update in our favorite case with the monkey selfie. I, I guess I can say it. A macaque is an old monkey or old, old world monkey or new world monkey or something and therefore is considered a monkey. So it is a monkey selfie. There was a weird order that came down in May, I guess. Yeah, May 25th, so about 20 days ago. A sua sponte request for a vote on whether to rehear on banc the published opinion of Naruto versus David Slater. Pursuant to their local order, parties are requested to file simultaneous briefs setting forth their respective positions on whether the case should be reheard on banc. So here we have the first one. This is the PETA one, and they are Naruto's next friend. I am not saying they are Naruto's next friend. They are saying they are Naruto's next friend. They are, that's how they are appearing in this case. And they claim that under Ninth Circuit precedent, the court should dismiss an appeal after the parties settle and move to dismiss. That the panel's speculative conclusion that PETA is engaged in improper behavior is incorrect. That the panel's decision not to issue an opinion was not necessary to protect judicial resources and could discourage future settlements. So they're going to be arguing that we're touching upon the right to settle and that that's a very important right. Then they argue that the court should not take the case en banc to reconsider its prior holding and that courts have Article Three jurisdiction to adjudicate the rights. So they're going to they're try and re-argue the case here, starting on page 19. The court should not reconsider its holding in citation that animals have standing and the court should not adopt a position that the courts lack jurisdiction over next friend suits brought on behalf of animals. And what do we mean when we say en banc? Uh, here, Firefox and Wikipedia tell us that an en banc session is a session in which a case is heard before all the judges of a court. So all of the judges will hear the argument or, or, or read the materials and make their own decisions, and then they will all vote together to see what outcome and what opinion should be written. And then usually one of them will have their clerk or a couple of their clerks write it, and then they'll all approve it and release it. So what does PETA have to say? On September 11th, 2017, the parties filed a joint motion to dismiss the appeal and vacate the judgment because they reached a settlement. On April 13th, the panel denied the motion for the settlement. On April 23rd, the panel issued a merits decision. Neither party requested rehearing or rehearing on banc. On May 25th, the panel issued the following order about the sua sponte request for a vote. PETA sees three possible issues, but believe only the first warrants rehearing. The threshold question is, should the panel have granted the joint motion? PETA believes the answer is yes. The joint motion here meaning the settlement. The parties were in the middle of litigation, so they have, when they settled the case, they had to settle the case with the approval of the judge, and the judges denied the settlement. There is no longer any adversity here because of the settlement. Under circuit precedent, courts should refrain from adjudicating abstract questions of law that no party is currently pursuing. The panel decision and the decision of the court below thus should be vacated and the case dismissed. And they have a point here because the settlement document is still a valid contract between the parties. The court has denied that settlement as affecting this case. The court does not believe that that settlement changes the outcome of this case and does not believe that the case should be dismissed because of that settlement. So PETA says, because there is no longer any dispute between the appellant and appellees, on banc consideration would be inappropriate. Nevertheless, PETA addresses the two issues below that were identified in the panel decision and the partial concurrence. First, both the majority and concurrence suggest that the Ninth Circuit should overrule its prior decision in Cetacean Community v. Bush that non-human animals can have Article III standing to pursue claims in federal court. Second, the partial concurrence also suggests that this appeal should have been dismissed for lack of jurisdiction because the federal rules of civil procedure do not authorize next friend suits brought on behalf of non-human animals. PETA does not believe these issues warrant en banc review. None of the parties raised either of these arguments, either below or on appeal. 
the court should not consider them sua sponte or on their own, on its own, after the parties have settled and moved to dismiss. There is no reason to further review this case to revisit settled law that non-human animals have standing to bring suit in federal court under Article 3 and the Federal Rules of Civil Procedure. Now, I'm not going to go through and everything about Article 3 standing in the Federal Rules of Rules. Ooh, I can't speak. And the federal rules of civil procedure, the very basics are that you must have standing to bring a case and you must have a case to bring. So uh, Article 3 standing is that you have an injury that is caused by the opposing party. There are damages that are redressable by a court. So if you don't have any one of those things, if there's no actual injury or if the injury didn't, wasn't caused by the opposing side, or if the caused injury did not damage you in a legally recognizable way, or if the damages are so minimal that there's no remedy that can be given, then there's no case to bring. There's no controversy and there's nothing for a court to do. So PETA is trying to say that they can file a lawsuit in the Ninth Circuit, I believe this is California, on behalf of a monkey that I believe is two-thirds of the way around the world, that they have some sort of relationship with this monkey, some legal relationship, that they can stand in on that being's behalf. And so they are sort of saying here, no, we really don't want you to rehear this case because you're going to be ruling on things that we don't want rulings on because then the rulings are probably going to be against us and we'll never be able to do this again. That might not be true. That might be hyperbolic. I actually think the court will likely say that non-human animals can have standing, but this isn't it. That's what I think they're going to say. And that's what I think uh, PETA wants to avoid. Let's then go next to not David Slater's, but rather Blurb's response. Blurb was one of the publishers, I think. I think were the, they, were the, they were the publisher of the, the picture. So this is from Blurb, and this is eight pages long. En banc review is not favored and ordinarily will not be ordered. It is appropriate only where necessary to secure or maintain uniformity of the court's decisions or the proceeding involves a question of exceptional importance. I don't know, this sounds like a question of exceptional importance or something that would help maintain uniformity if we answered the question of when animals can have standing. This high standard is met where necessary to resolve an irreconcilable conflict or in cases that affect large numbers of parties, or involve substantial resources, implicate fundamental constitutional rights, or involve the formulation of legal principles likely to recur. None of these things are true in the monkey copyright case. I disagree with that last one. I think the formulation of legal principles likely to recur is exactly what the court would look at. Not that this is going to be happening often, but this is highly instructive of how copyright is handled and when, where the line is for copyright ownership to begin. This will not be the last time that someone sets up a situation where an animal takes its own picture. And it may be not the last time that an animal takes its own picture. There might be a first time that an animal knows it's taking its picture or at least thinks it's doing something more than just existing that it, it thinks it knows it's actuating a lever and it wants to accomplish the action or something. Maybe you've trained it so that it, a food pellet or something drops when it presses the shutter button of the camera. I don't see why this would be a very difficult thing for someone to set up again and do. And it would probably get some pretty awesome photos. And so we need some case law on whether or not those are copyrightable. If I go do that with my dogs and I get an award-winning shot, do I get to sell that or does everyone get to steal that because the dog technically pressed the shutter button? That's an important question because that, that money would be paying for making more of those awesome shots or motivating someone to get those awesome shots to begin with. Whereas if you're not setting up the camera and pressing the shutter, then who is? Who's fixing that work in a tangible medium expression? If it's not a human, it's not copyrighted. 
The panel unanimously and correctly held that Naruto, a crested macaque, lacks statutory standing to pursue claims under the Copyright Act. That straightforward holding is consistent with established circuit precedent, precluding animals from suing absent express authorization from Congress, and there is no reason to reconsider it or disturb it on rehearing. If an act of Congress plainly states that animals have statutory standing, then animals have statutory standing. If the statute does not plainly state, then animals do not. If Congress intended to take the extraordinary step of authorizing animals as well as people and legal entities to sue, they could and should have done so plainly. In the absence of any such statement, we conclude that cetaceans, in that case, do not have statutory standing to sue. Moreover, the panel appropriately declined to recognize the right of a next friend to bring suit on behalf of animals absent express authorization from Congress. Finally, en banc review is not necessary to resolve any conflict with respect to Article 3. Although the panel questioned the wisdom of cetaceans holding that animals can satisfy Article 3's standing requirement, the majority ruling that Congress must explicitly grant statutory standing to animals effectively quells any risk that other animals will begin stampeding courts in this circuit anytime soon. Ah, stampeding the courts. They said animals will begin stampeding the courts. That's funny. If and when Congress takes the remarkable action of affirmatively explicitly affording animals standing under specific federal statutes, there may be reason for this court to consider, in the context of an actual case or controversy, whether such legislation circumvents the jurisdictional limits of Article 3. This is David Slater's response. David Slater is the defendant, the guy, who set up the camera and, if I understand correctly, sorta trained the thing to take its picture sort of train the thing to pick up the camera and press the shutter button. I, I need details on that. I remember hearing that on a podcast, but I don't want to cite that as a primary source. I haven't read that anywhere else. Defendants David John Slater and wildlife personalities submit this brief in response to the sua sponte on banc order. Slater respectfully suggests that the court rehear this case on banc, so he wants it to be heard and affirm the district court's judgment that Plaintiff Naruto lacks statutory standing under the Copyright Act, the same result the panel majority reached. Slater wholeheartedly agrees with the result the panel reached, but with respect, he disagrees with the position all three panel judges took, that animals cannot have standing under Article 3 of the United States Constitution. Slater believes that this court correctly held in Cetacean Community v. Bush that Article 3 does not preclude animals from having standing to sue in federal court. Quote, we see no reason why Article 3 prevents Congress from authorizing a suit in the name of the animal. The Cetacean panel thus properly reserves for political branches the answer to the important question of animal standing in federal court, rather than allowing the judiciary to have the first and last words on the matter. To be sure... All three judges of the panel in this case rightly observed a serious flaw of omission in citation, whether the self-appointed lawyer in the case was a suitable next friend to represent the animal community. In the citation appellate panel and district judge's defense, the government defendants in that case never questioned that the plaintiff's attorney was an adequate advocate for the citation's interest, nor did the government argue that this lawyer's connection to the plaintiff was so remote as to deprive the federal courts of Article III jurisdiction to decide the case. Regardless of which position litigants in previous cases like citation might have asserted, and regardless of which issues judges in this circuit would have examined sua sponte, the question now before the full court is whether to sit on banc to clear the air in what is now a foggy jurisdictional landscape. It should. On rehearing. On banc. Slater respectfully suggests that the court should embrace four straightforward standing rules. 1. Article 3 does not preclude animal standing. 2. If an act of Congress plainly states that animals can have standing, they can. Absent such a plain statement, they cannot have standing. A person under Federal Rule of Civil Procedure 17c could be an animal, thus permitting next friend representation, but only if the act of Congress authorizing the action or cause of action at issue plainly states that animals can have statutory standing, and four, the requirements for next friend standing in this court set forth in Coalition of Clergy v. Bush are mandatory to invoke federal court jurisdiction. 
Slater, a nature photographer based in Wales, did not choose to embark on a legal adventure in California regarding a photograph taken in an Indonesian jungle, but he dearly hopes that what will be the most exhaustive federal legal precedent on animal rights to date, a case that will forever bear his name, is one that holds open the idea of animal standing in United States federal courts. And I'll stop there. That's pretty remarkable. So David Slater would like the court to, re- to, to affirm that animals can have standing under very specific circumstances that were authorized by Congress. That sounds kind of fair to me, actually, and I'd love to hear other professionals' opinions as well as uh, non-professionals' opinions. So please, uh, please do feel free to share uh, in the comments when we get there. Yeah, I'm thinking that PETA is thinking that they will just take it the way it is, better the devil we have, better the devil we know than better the devil we don't know, that it will be less of a loss if it goes to, uh, to, the, to an en banc hearing and they rule against PETA. Um, David Slater has the opposite opinion. He's like, we should go try for this. This is the time. We should try for this. And... I, I hear him. I, I, I happen to agree. I think that I should be able to stand in for my dog if somebody is hurting my dog or something like that. But I'm pretty sure I already can. It's just through a different set of laws. This is more of like an environmental protection law kind of thing. Like if there's a EPA violation going on in northern Pennsylvania, well, I'm not from northern Pennsylvania. I don't drink water from northern Pennsylvania, you know, whatever. Certainly northern Pennsylvanians have standing. I do not. But let's say that I, you know, want to sue on behalf of the wildlife of northern Pennsylvania. Where's the line there? How connected do I have to be to that wildlife? And how much protection does that wildlife need? Etc. What are all the rules about that so that you can sue? So it kind of sounds like um, Slater is now is now kind of like saying, Hey, Peta. Let's let's actually like like we've settled already and, and stuff. But let's let's actually try to like get something said here, like something meaningful said about animals. Yeah, he's sort of on the side of of, of Peta with that part. I'm not terribly surprised, but uh, he is. He's sort of uh, he's sort of working. He's he's on, he's on the same. He's not working with. He's on the same side of the issue there. He wants a good ruling in favor of animal rights. And PETA is saying, no, 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 we don't want this to be the case. We don't want this to be the case. Not this one. (laughs) You know, PETA's a little worried. Thank you very much to our sponsors. This channel would not be possible without your support. Thank you to all of our Patreon sponsors. And thank you to all the Twitch subscribers as well. You can... Go to patreon.com slash ljfrench if you'd like to learn more about becoming a Patreon sponsor. Thank you very much to Kareem Harper, who is still sponsoring us at the $500 level in June here. Thank you very much, uh, Kareem. And thank you to our $50 plus supporters, Jonathan Doe, DJ Gilcrease, John Steele, Gavin Barnard, Evie, Andy, Kyle Mudrak, Sean McNamara, Vera Mintain, Johnny Anderson, Michael Pierce, and William Gonzalez. Your, uh, your support at the $50 level really helps us out. And thank you very much to the $5 plus supporters who are scrolling on the LED panel behind me and will be on the screen for any of the VODs that we produce with this footage. There are 216 plus of you, I think, and it absolutely floors me every time I go and, 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 and paste all of these names into the, uh, uh, the YouTube VODs and all that. So thank you very much for joining me, all of you. Look forward to the new videos this week, which will be the Lexmark case with, with DJ Gilcrease's request and the Jamie Walton interview as that collaboration needs to get out in a timely fashion. And then I'll be working on all the other things, including Cambridge Analytica and million, million more stories that just keep coming because it's that kind of world. They just keep coming and coming and going and coming and going. And there's never really an end to this, to this, we didn't start the fire kind of turning and burning of the world. So, Nico. Let's get Nico back up here for a, a goodbye. Hop. Good boy. Yo, are you looking for more treats? Is that what this is? This is all about treats? How about me? When is it about me? And you, huh? How about us? How are we doing? Are we good? Are you my favorite dog? 
You're my favorite boy dog. How about that? I'll put it that way. You're my favorite boy dog. I love you very much. Can you say goodbye? Can you say goodbye so we can let all the people go get to their Tuesday, excuse me, Sunday afternoon stuff? I don't know why I said Tuesday. <laughs> So thank you very much for joining me. Love you all. I am Leonard French, your favorite copyright attorney, and I'll see you in the vibes that drop and on next Sunday's live show. Love you all. Bye.